Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and today we're working with our Botany main lesson block. So we're using a Waldorf curriculum and this is for fifth grade and you can find more information about the curriculum that we're using in the description box below. So today we're doing a very involved lesson. We're using the live education curriculum and we're working on conifers today. But there was a section between our last lesson and this lesson on conifers that we're skipping. There are a lot of like art tutorials to help you with your drawing. We decided to skip those for now, but we may revisit them later. So this is quite a long lesson and there are a lot of lesson activities suggested for this lesson. You certainly don't have to do them all, but we had a lot of material for us to be able to do quite a few of them. So we're going to do some of them. And for this video, you'll be able to hear me doing some of these lessons with my son so that you can get an idea of how we work these lessons together. So we have a variety of pine cones that we picked up from Nature Watch for another kit that we have, and these are going to work really well for this project. So we're going to match up some pine cones before we watercolor them. So let's, can you uh, try to match up, I, I know we don't have them all, but can you try to match up the ones that we do have? You want to try it too? This one yeah, that's the big one. one. This one goes right here. Yep. I think we have some small ones. I think I think we've got two that are pretty similar. You know what? These this ones have the little thorny ends. Do the do these ones have the little no, thorny is this ends? Good? No. These ones don't. I wonder if that makes them a different variety. Is this good? Well, does that, I think that one goes over there. I don't know if these Sorry. are cedar or not. I think I well maybe they are. Actually maybe they are. That could be one of these. Yeah, maybe they are cedar. I'm not 100% sure, actually. I don't think this Where one is, is this? in there, though. Where is this little one? Oh, these are the same. Oh, they are? Yeah. Oh, then it's not. Because these cedar, ones, cedar. you rarely yeah, yeah. see the cedar cones. Mm -hmm. So that one's not. But I want to know which one this one is because I really like the shape of this one. Actually, yeah, I, wanna, I want us to watercolor this one if we can. That one goes there. And then there's also these tiny ones here. I really don't know what they are either. Okay, so at least we have three. So let's go ahead and watercolor three of them since we know what they are. This is the California Giant. It's also <laughs> known, I think, as the Sugar Pine. And this one is the Spruce. Uh, and that's good because we actually watercolored the Spruce. And then we have here the Native Pine, or it could possibly be... So let's go ahead and watercolor these three. I think that one three. is the Scotch Pine. The Scotch Pine. Oh. Because it has the pointy ends, and that kind of looks yeah, like... Yeah, why did I say Native Pine? pine. pine. Okay, so pine Scotch Pine. These All three right. are different. Okay, so let's put these aside. Mm. And let's, yeah, let's watercolor that one maybe. And this one's the same. Okay, so let's get our watercolor paper. And we got that book from the library. For this watercolor project, we are going to be using Distress Inks as well as watercolor paper by Fabriano. It's 90 pound and it's 9 inches by 12 inches. You can find more information in the description box below as well as all of the colors that we use for this project. I'm going to use this one today. Okay. I think I'm gonna use. Yeah, you're gonna use a small flat one. Mm. Or, I'll use, I'll this use one. these two then. And maybe a little bit of this one, or maybe this one, this one maybe. I'll take this. Okay. I'll use. These All right, two. so use um, we are going to start with. I think. How about we do the sugar pine, and we can do that I'm almost full size. Full size. Wait, do you want to do it this way or this way? I don't really know how we can do that. Let's see. Let's see. see. How do we do it this way? I think this way would be better, so that you can see the different. Uh, but How if you, you did, yeah, that? if you did it like this, you'd only be able to see like that. That would be kind of boring. Well, I don't really know how we're going to do it. I think we should try doing it this way. Let's make it sort of like petals coming out from the center. So think of like, think of like a center stem and just do it on one side because either we'll do another one next to it or we'll do some right. Maybe for the small ones, and then we can is, use a uh, smaller like the, paper. Um, yeah. The, yeah, keep working on yours, sweetheart. All right, so shall we begin? Mm -hmm. uh, let's start with, we don't have any yellow in here. Maybe this color? You can use my yellow. Oh, thank you. Maybe I will. Uh, hmm. Shall we do a very light stem? Yeah. Go ahead and add some more water to your paintbrush so it's super light. Okay. And let's just do a really light stem in the center. So we can kind of base it off. Can I borrow some of your yellow? Sure. Can I put it here just for a minute? 
Okay. So then let's take the yellow and outline each of these um, petals. I'm going to have to put this down, actually. Let me yeah, put I it down. Hold it. No, no, sweetheart, because you're... you're uh, An outline you want? Like, kind of go like this, you think? They also have to go towards the front. This is going to be hard to do. Can I do another one? Sure, baby. Uh, larger, I think. So we're going to end up having kind of a difficult time with this to begin with. It's really hard for me to copy something that's three-dimensional. Now, in the end, it turns out really beautiful, and I really do like it. But while we were doing it, I was really skeptical as to whether or not it was going to turn out the way that we hoped. As we near the end of this project, my son expresses that his watercolor does not look like the pine cone. So I'm going to come back in with my own paintbrush, and I kind of help him out a little bit, just so that I, it can look more like the shape of the pine cone. And just a little bit of help like that really goes a long way. And he was really happy with his project in the end. So I've pulled out my Wink of Stella pen. This is going to provide a little bit of shimmer and it looks really subtle and very beautiful at the end and I really do like the way that it's going to just sparkle a little bit. It's less than glitter but it's a really nice shimmer and it's a little bit hard to tell here but once it's dry I think you'll be able to see a little bit better. So the last thing we want to do for this project is add the lines and the narration. Now, my son decided that he would rather do copy work for this one, and so I went ahead and I wrote some information about pine cones, and then he went ahead and copied whatever will fit on his page, which was about two-thirds of whatever I wrote. So this is what it looks like when it's done. I went ahead and did my own narration alongside him and he then copied mine. And I really do like the way the pine cones turn out. But now we're going to move on to another part of this lesson. I've pulled out the Practical Naturalist and there's this section here that showcases different kinds of bark. And so we have bark from a couple of trees and we just pulled this out to observe and look at and see if we could match it up to one of the images in the book, but it did not match. We're going to continue this lesson with another activity. It's back in the Botany Main Lesson Book and this time we are going to be observing the shape of different conifers. To help us out, we're going to go back to our ABCs of Nature book. This is by Reader's Digest. It was published in 1984 and it has been such a treasure for this unit. And today we're going to use this image at the bottom for inspiration for another watercolor drawing. And what's neat is that two of those trees happen to be native to California, our home state. And so we're going to be drawing a redwood tree, a spruce tree, and then a Douglas fir, which happens to be native to the Pacific Northwest. So we are going to do a pencil drawing first and then we're going to come back in with our watercolors. And to do this, we decided to try to make the shape of the pine cone as the shape of the tree, since we learned that pine cones resemble the tree that they come from. Now, we both kind of struggled with this drawing, and my son wasn't super pleased with his end result, so we're actually going to do this again, and you'll be able to see the final result at the end of this video. So we're going back to our Distress Inks to watercolor once again. Of course, all of the colors that we're using are in the description box below. We are just squishing this onto a non-porous surface. That little white plate there is something that's been in my scrapbook stash for a really long time, so I actually do not remember where I got it from, but even some plastic packaging would do just fine. So we're going to start by doing the trunks of the trees and what my son didn't quite get at that moment was to make the trunks lighter and more slender as they rose up and so his redwood tree on the left the top of the trunk actually looks larger than the bottom of the trunk. Now normally it wouldn't be such a big deal to have the artwork not exactly resemble the lesson but for this particular lesson it was really important to get the same shape as the trees that we were studying because that's the part of this lesson that's the whole point of this lesson is so that you can actually see the different distinctions between the shapes of the trees 
So one thing that I do that I kind of regret is that I end up coloring my whole background with kind of a blue-gray color. I really don't like the way that ends up looking, even though the shape of my trees ended up okay. And my son did not like the shape of his trees because they really do not resemble the trees that we're trying to paint. So we are going to do this again, but I did not include the footage here for you since you're seeing this to begin with. But I certainly will show you the final result in just a minute. So these are all dried and we will still include them into our main lesson book, but this is what my son redid after all. It still does not resemble the redwood or the spruce or the Douglas fir perfectly, but that's okay. It's a lot better than his first attempt. We also went ahead and did another tree. We each chose our favorite tree. He chose the spruce and I chose the redwood. And we did that on the side of the page so that we could add lines on the other side so that we could do our narration or copy work. So before we get to our narration, I want to show you what we did with our other set of watercolors. And this is the one where we drew all three on one page. And we went ahead and labeled that one. My sense isn't labeled now, but it was labeled by the end of this project. So the book comes with a suggested narration or copy work or dictation that you can do. So I had my son copying the book initially, but then I didn't really care for the narration that was provided. So I ended up writing my own and then my son copied as much as he could from the one that I wrote. I have a couple more activities that I have included with this lesson. All right, so next we're going to look at these pine needle leaves did you know these are leaves yeah and then we also got leaves from the backyard do you remember which ones you got this um, one has some weird stuff on it i looked through the microscope it looks yeah. like can you, can you put some it kind of I yeah mm -hmm. it looks like some kind of growth it's hard to see but it is uh so go ahead and look at that see. one i didn't see oh, one you that got was the, open okay great oh you couldn't find the one that was already open mm -hmm. okay so we're going to be having some pine nuts as part of this unit oh. and also did you know that we can make some pesto with the basil that we grew earlier on in this unit with your uh, pine nuts there we go. yeah yeah we yeah, can I'll have it on bread or something yeah let me get a pair of scissors do you have a little dish um, no. do you want to put it on our pine needle basket sure. yeah yeah let's put it on our pine needle basket that's something else we're going to do today there we go. Yeah. that's fun okay enjoy all right, so we're going to look at, this is a grape leaf from our backyard. Do you see anything? Uh -huh. Yeah, I see all the gross stuff. And this one is actually a really good one to look under the microscope because you can really, really, really see all those little cells inside. Oh yeah. And this Perfect. is the pine needle basket and that we knitted. We, we did, we sewed that. Yeah. Um, I will, I'm gonna look at that in just a second. And then we're going to compare it under the microscope with the pine needles. And then later on, we are going to make some pine needle baskets. Oh. All right, so do you want to put, you want to put this one under? I can try. If I you want to try it? Okay. Put the light on onto the highest setting. This microscope is coming in really handy for this lesson and he's taking a look at those pine needles. Can you tell me a little bit about pine needles uh, in comparison to these kinds of leaves? Um. Do you know what these kinds of leaves are called? But even without looking under the microscope, can you tell me something about these ones? Uh, that one? Yeah, versus these ones. Uh, well, they're long instead of wide. Okay. And there's, I guess, I mean, there's three kind of leaves, and there's three kind of areas on there. Okay. Um, this is really good, Mama. But if you look closely, you can see the, it's kind of, what do you call it? Barbed? Barbed, I guess. Because mm -hmm. if you go like this, it's smooth and on the way back. It... Ooh, Our pine trees. See all the debris on here. Yeah. Pine yeah, needles. So cool. Oh, yuck. So pine needles, or rather pine trees, do they lose their leaves? Yes. Um, no. Yes. Or, yeah, they're everything. But they're... They lose their leaves, but they lose them all year round, and they grow all year round. Yeah, so how long do they stay on the tree for? Around two years. Around two years. How long does the grape leaf stay on the grapevine? Uh, only around like one season, or two one, seasons. Yeah, about one season before they fall off again. So in the winter, they, it looks really bare. It looks like the whole grapevine is dead, but it's not. It's getting ready to make new buds in the spring. So if these are going to stay on for two years, 
which is like how many times more than a season? Uh, that's ten. No, no, sorry, sorry. eight. Eight times more than a season. What is something special about these leaves that allow it to stay on a tree for two years? I don't know. Okay, well, I'll tell you. Uh, number one, they are very thin and waxy, which means that not a lot of water is going to transpire off of this leaf. These are very moisture rich and they have a large surface area. Actually, you could probably calculate the surface area. This is very, very, very small compared to this, which means a lot of water is coming off of this leaf. Remember when you went uh, to that one camp and we were, if you had no water and you were in the desert, how mm -hmm. would you make water? Uh, you would dig a hole, then put leaves in it, or fill it with leaves, then put, cover like, it put a rock cover it with, like, plastic, I guess, and then put, put a rock, a in, rock the in the middle so that all the water drains into a container that's and where's, in the middle of the leaves. Where's that water coming from? The leaves. The leaves. Could you guess how much water would come from this leaf versus this leaf? Well, a lot more than in that one. Than yeah, this one. maybe we should try that out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so these yeah, ones. I said that. You did say that. So these ones are made to be lost after one season. They're nice and large. They can make a lot of food for the plant. And these ones, though they're very thin, they still make food for the plant. But imagine the huge tree. How many leaves are on that huge tree? A lot. Hundreds of thousands, tons and tons and tons of leaves. All right, so go ahead and look at them under the microscope and then we're going to do something else with these pine needles. The last activity we're going to do for this lesson is weave a pine needle basket. For this project, you need some raffia and a wide-eyed needle. This one happens to have a sharp point, but I think a blunt one would be better with young children. And we're using some pine needles that are already pliable because they're green, but if they are brown, you can just put them in a bath of warm water for about 45 minutes until they're soft. We're going to go ahead and wrap the raffia around a small bundle of pine needles. In order to make this a little bit easier for children to do, I would recommend using a gauge, which I am not using right now. To make a gauge, all you need to do is trim down a straw to about an inch. That way your child will always know how many pine needles he should be having as he's working through this pine needle basket because you'll fill the gauge with your pine needles. Now we're using a rather small bundle as we're making this and this is great for an adult but if you're working with children I would recommend using a larger bundle of pine needles. You'll be able to finish the project faster. It'll be less tedious overall. This project took us about 30 to 40 minutes and we worked on one basket together. I did the beginning part, he did the middle part, and then I came in at the end to finish it off. So this is what it looks like when it's all finished. I'm really pleased with the way it turned out. I really like the pattern that the raffia made on the front side of the basket. And if you want to check out some of the other projects that we're doing with our Botany main lesson block, you can tap on the screen right now. I know this was a more lengthy lesson, but I feel like all the activities really enhanced the information that we were studying, and I'm really pleased to have so many hands-on projects with this particular lesson. So don't forget that you can find me on a daily basis by visiting me on Instagram at Pepper and Pine.